Those RC cars are next to be regulated, huh? As many of you know, that remote ID drone topic in the US is basically a big topic right now because it could mean the end for a lot of people trying to fly things like drones even for fun, like say quote toys, because it seems like there's no distinction between someone flying it for fun versus commercial. Just generally speaking quickly, they plan to do things, for example, requiring people to have internet access, any person being able to access, I guess, your data to know where you're flying and all that, so it's a little ridiculous. And the concern is it might even come here, like to places like Canada in one of those monkey see, monkey do situations. Will that be the case? Well, I thought this was interesting because apparently here in Canada, I guess pretty soon we're going to have some kind of system that actually tracks and identify drones where at the same time, I suppose for the operator, it'll allow you to get access a lot quicker. Like for myself, you have to go through this whole Nav Canada approval regardless of how you're flying, so it's a bit tedious in my opinion. But here it says, Nav Canada signs strategic agreement with Unifly. Nav Canada has entered into an agreement with Unifly, a strategic technology partner in the deployment of a national system that provides digital services to safely operating and managing drones in Canadian airspace. The system has an intuitive user interface and will enable Canadian drone pilots to access web and mobile applications to identify safe and legal airspace, plan flights, manage operations, pilots, and fleets of drones. This fully digitized system makes the process of requesting authorization to fly in controlled airspace easier and faster for qualified drone pilots. The app will also benefit airlines and general aviation pilots as it reduces the risk of accidental drone incursions. So how's that, huh? I guess this would kind of be like our version of that before you fly app in the US, but to my understanding, this will do it all for you. You can basically keep track of your flights, your records, I guess tell them your plan digitally, like in Nav Canada, and get almost instant approval. So that's actually good in that sense, if that's the case. So who is this company? It says Unifly's mission is to create a digital environment that helps simulate the drone market while safeguarding the safety of the airspace. And you can basically see this kind of presentation, I guess their vision of what life will be like with things like drones integrated into the airspace in our everyday life. Unify is a leading supplier of unmanned traffic management solutions connecting authorities and operators to safely integrate RPAS into the airspace. Founded by former air traffic controllers, the company has operations worldwide and offices in Europe, North America, and South America. Unify created a global ecosystem of partners composed of international, national, and local authorities, airports, technology providers, standard development organizations, research groups, and academic institutions. The Unify UTM portfolio is designed as a highly scalable, cloud-based solution supporting all stakeholders. So they basically stress the importance of, I guess, real time. Like here it says for the drone pilot, easily plan and validate your drone operations directly on the interactive 40 map, manage your batteries and keep track of all your operations in the automated logbook. So I guess you can see kind of like in their demonstration and everything like that on this video, it seems like, again, there's drones flying everywhere. There's things like helicopters. And at times you can see the height that the helicopter is flying and then I'll show you the height of the drone. So. Again, that's their vision for the future where you'll have a system like this automatically managing everything. And what I thought was kind of neat was I guess we could kind of see a brief kind of preview of what it could potentially be like if you're using this app. So yeah, just watching this app here, I thought it'd be interesting to go over. So you can see here when it starts up, just seems like I guess any old app, basically you see the area you're in and you see the little bubble, like the no-fly zone for example. It's kind of interesting here, it displays all of the restrictions like here it says do not fly over what 10 meters or something like that if that's what it says wow that's pretty low don't fly higher than 10 meters although that's better than no flying at all but here it says the person was using a unique typhoon and then for some reason it said i guess they can't fly and then you can see in this interface as they go about it seems like they can change the drone like what you're using and from here it looked like they changed to a dji phantom instead and then with the Phantom, it says, okay, you are authorized to fly. So I wonder if that's kind of like here where certain drones you can fly in advanced operations, whereas some you can't. So I guess that would be kind of a preview of how that would work there. And I guess once they go through all the procedure and stuff like that, then all of a sudden it went green, which I would assume is the approval. Like, okay, you can fly with these restrictions that you came up with. So I'm assuming again, that's kind of the preview of what it could be like if people like ourselves has to use something like this. 
To me, the best thing about this is now you'll actually have something to get instant approval, so to speak. You don't have to fill out that form for really basic operations. You just look at it. So that's actually good in that sense. It'll probably be like that low altitude authorization stuff in the US, which would be great. And I would assume this app and everything like that will be free for the public to use if that's going to be the standard, because I'll be a little ridiculous if they're going to start trying to charge people like, I don't know, a hundred dollars or something like that to use this. As well with the topic of remote ID, to my understanding, this does not require you to actually add additional equipment and stuff like to your drone, because it seems like it's doing it more out of your phone, like out of the data of it. And it makes you wonder too, like in the US and all that with that proposal with the FAA, why does a regular person need to have all this stuff? I mean, if you want the authorities, the traffic controller, whatever to have this, then be my guest. This actually makes more sense overall, in my opinion. Would you be excited about this? Do you think it's good news? I just think that's at least, again, a better step than what they're proposing with things like mandatory internet access for everyone regardless of what you fly. So hopefully that's a sign here that that's not going to be the direction that we're going to go. All right, see you guys later.